Peace, Morris. We're just going to, um, for all those people who are new, never, you know, been here before, um, we do have to give honor to our foremothers and forefathers in our own special way. So we're just going to do that right now, and um, if you want to participate, feel free. If not, um, hold your, hold your peace. Yes, no. okay. <laughs> Everybody's sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Five on the left, two on the right. A lot of Father of the Universe. A lot of Father of the Universe. Father of Love. Father of Love. Truth. Truth. Peace. Peace. Freedom. Freedom. And justice. And justice. Uh, my protector. My protector. My guide. My guide. And my salvation. And my salvation. By night. And by night. And by day. And by day. Go to prophet. Go to prophet. Go to Ali. Ashe. Rome must fall. Rome must fall. Rome fell. Rome fell. Mm-hmm. We're going to start off with um, our letters to be read every meeting. Um, we're actually, we're going to start with one of the letters to be read every meeting. To be proclaimed every meeting, March 18th, 1929. Oh, yeah, and, and um, we noticed that there's there's more that that are starting to call meeting service, right? Nobujwali did not sanction services <laughs> around here, <laughs> right? We have meetings, so you might hear Allah and you know Muslim and Islam and things like that. This is not a social or religious organization. Our job is to teach our people civics so that they can um, take their places in the world like their ancient foremen and forefathers did, not be under somebody's yoke um, and being subject to laws that aren't laws and stuff like that. Right? So that's, that's a sign for Moors that are coming into this information that. Um, for example, you walk into a, a temple and they're talking about, yeah, you know, we're going to have service or whatever today. Just go back, just leave, leave. Don't even stay there to hear anything that they have to say. Because it's more than likely going to be rooted in some type of um, teaching religious perspective when that's not what it is that we need to be true. Even, even Yahshua made the claim that you know, our people die from lack of knowledge, not lack of you know, praying or going to church or going to a mosque or whatever. Right? So to be proclaimed in every meeting, Islam, I am glad to know that I have a few faithful mores among you all, and I desire for them to know the truth and the divine truth. There is a host of jealousy about me and the movement now by the same people on our side of the nation that claim it was only a joke and unreal. But now since they have found out from the government officials and the nations of the earth that this is the only sole foundation that all Asiatics must depend upon for their earthly salvation as American citizens, they are working every scheme that they can to disqualify me so they themselves may take charge of the situation. I have notified all these things to you long ago in the past. It is through the faithful more that attribute to the movement and uplifting fund. The ones that paid their divine respect to me and the movement will be remembered. That is why I am calling upon all faithful Moors to increase their faithfulness to me, your prophet, and your divine Moorish movement. I need finance and I need it badly. Never before have I needed finance so badly as I do at present, so I can shove aside the discord that is facing the nation. It all comes through jealousy because of my fame and nobility. The nations of the world will not recognize the movement without I, the prophet, being head. It has been proven by my works, which I have performed in the last few years. So we're going to, as usual, um, jump to some articles that were in the paper so we can analyze from our perspective. You'll just pop that door, Mark? So we can analyze from our perspective um, what's going on out there and how we should be looking at, at 
certain things that we hear and, and see. Um, one thing, the first article is um, from Metro newspaper, March 12th, 2015. Want to quit your job? You could be fined for that. <laughs> so these people who call themselves um, employers, employers, employers have created a human resources department and got rid of the personnel department because the humans are the new resource. Right? So this doesn't apply anymore. Anybody who has a job, occupation, whatever, you got a salary. When you applied for the job, you had the little box, you know, black, white, other. You checked off any of these right here? You are contracting with this employer that you are a human resource, which is why they can have stuff like this. Workers must be aware of how much notice employers expect from them. Thinking about mooning your boss, then moonwalking right out of the office, never to return? Go ahead and dream, but know that if you do quit without giving notice, it could cost you big money. A recent court decision saw an ex-employee of an Ontario-based drilling company forced to pay his former employer $56,000 for quitting without notice. Right? They also mentioned a court made this decision. Now we know that Whatever so-called court, we'll put this in quote unquote, whatever so-called court that made this decision is really administrative and it's not judicial. Taxes, administrative court, not judicial. Um, Foreclosure or whatever like that, administrative court, not judicial. Tickets, administrative court, not judicial. Matrimony, all that, administrative court, not judicial. So, already, you know, this point here, we already put ourselves in the box of being a slave to this thing called an employer, right? On top of this part, there's they have this department called Human Resources Department. This is the, the another level of the make you a slave, right? And then on top of that, if something goes down, they have this jurisdiction that's an administrative tribunal that they say is a court, and nobody questions them on what what is this. Is another level of right? So it's so this. Is similar to somebody saying, yeah, the government did something. The government's supposed to do this, the government's supposed to do that. If you're not qualifying what government, you're more than likely talking about a corpse or an animus legis, which is artificial. So we have to qualify everything before we even start checking off stuff that we think that we're checking stuff off that we're going to get a job and salary or whatever like that and then end up 
you know, fired because boss sucks and you want to leave and you say forget this because, you know, he, he called me nigger on the job or whatever like that. I'm not having this. I'm out of here. And then you're the one that's got to pay some fine when he's the one that really violated the law. Right? So that's just one example just to show that they've taken a position of making the people think that they are corporate entities or quote-unquote resources that can be used any way that the so-called employer feels fit. So what you're what you're gonna do, just because they have this fraud going on of, of you know making people corporations through all these these means, what you're gonna do is anytime you have the line, anything, I don't care what it is, anything that they say. What you're going to start doing is reserving your rights when you sign anything. So when you're right on the line, all rights reserved, and then sign whatever your signature is or whatever over that. And that's how moving forward, you deal with anything that anybody says sign here. If you take the position of not putting all rights reserved, And then just signing this, you're, you're agreeing to the terms and conditions that most of the time we don't read that falls on this contract. And once you agree to those terms and conditions that we don't read, more than likely, they're about to give you, you know, 500% interest or um, go in your account, take stuff, or knock your door, take your children out just because they're there, whatever else that they decide to do. Any questions? Are good? Well, actually, no, you go. Why do you sign over the top when you um, so Because the name, the quote-unquote name, name that's on all these documents is more than likely written in all capital letters. Because it's written in all capital letters, it means that it's attached to the Yeah. You got one back there? It's tied to the instrument known as the birth certificate. So the instrument called the birth certificate is a bonded instrument. Peace here, what's good? All right. The bonded instrument. No, I got one. So when you sign with just the with just the, the signature only, what people can do, which is what they do, they'll lift this signature and put it on other documents and sell it around the world. But if you have all rights on it, when they lift it, all rights comes with it, and now they can't sell it to anybody else. Which is why, um, which is why Treasury Bond and U.S. Yeah, no, or Federal Reserve notes are becoming unpopular in international waters or across international waters. Right. United States. So-called currency that the United States has been using to show that they have collateral or whatever like that is becoming less and less valuable. Right? 
So because it's becoming less and less valuable, it's because of things like this. People reserving their rights on it. And this is not just something that, you know, dark skin people are doing. You know, Europeans are doing this stuff too. Europeans are saying, I don't want to be a U.S. citizen anymore and denouncing their, their ties to the United States, quote unquote, government and going back to Switzerland, England, Germany, whatever like that, to be who they are. And really and truly, um, our position of telling our people to proclaim a nationality is um, what is going to finally make this whole thing fall. Until we, until we do something, this is going to continue because you know we're the we're the biggest we're the biggest commodity. We're the biggest human resource because of melanin, right? Because of carbon. We're the human resource that's worth the most. So if we if we take back our resource, which is our energy, and stop giving it to them, then they become they become unimportant. And then everybody's gonna start to want to again start doing business with us and not doing it with people who they shouldn't have to do with. Right? That that was clear. Um, March 12th, March 12th, 2015, uh, Ferguson chief resigns after scathing report. The police chief in the St. Louis suburb of Ferguson resigned Wednesday in the wake of a scathing Justice Department report prompted by the fatal shooting of an unarmed <coughs> black 18-year-old boy and white, by a white police officer. So as soon as they identify our people as black, and identify certain people as white, you know that you're dealing with inquisition, colonial operation. Period. Let's talk about them, discuss, whatever. That's what it is. As soon as you see black and white, somebody has an article, they say black and white. Somebody has a, you know, they want to um, um, solicit funds from the black community so they can build a black school or whatever. Inquisition colonial operation. Has nothing to do with helping people, assisting people, liberating people. All it has to do is keeping people under the yoke. It's all about keeping people under the yoke of the Inquisition and colonial operation. I believe this is the appropriate thing to do at this time. This city needs to move forward without any distraction. Ferguson Police Chief Thomas Jackson on his resignation. How come he didn't resign when it stopped first happened? Why is he resigning now? Why did he get months and months and months and months of pay and then now he's resigning? Right? He should have stepped down first time the thing happened. Because if, if you have an employee that's not doing his job, that doesn't fall on the employee. That falls on the person who hired them. If you have somebody who's not doing what they're supposed to do, they have a they have a occupation, right? It, it never falls on the boss. It always falls on on the individual who who did the wrong when really the boss should get pulled up too. This is why when Moors have situations and it's a, you know, low level, whoever trying to exercise some type of judicial authority that they don't have, we always go to the boss. We don't talk to the cashier, there's hair in the pool. We say, we go to the top people and talk to them. 
Because that's who makes the decision, not this individual that we deal with on this low level that we think they got some authority. Right? So, his resignation is coming after a report, which probably called him out for being, you know, whatever, you train these guys, whatever like that. These are all your officers going around killing people. You know what I mean? And he made the decision. You know, but obviously because of people higher than him told him, you know, you got your checks or whatever, time for you to step down, go get some other job. But we don't need you on here. Right? The city said in a statement that it reached a mutual separation agreement with Chief Thomas Jackson, who will get a severance payment and health insurance for a year. Lieutenant Colonel Al Eikhoff will become acting chief March 19th while the city searches for a replacement. <coughs> so how come how come somebody in military so remember just like you know we're talking about right Surgeon General, Attorney General, military. those are military terms. But then when you look at the situation of Ferguson, etc., they had military out there. They didn't have no riot police or nothing like that out there. They had military out there. They had, they had you know, sound weapons and stuff like that. So they're taking a position of what Moore's been telling people about forever, that it's coming. You play, play around, don't want to proclaim your nationality. These people are playing around. They're militarizing because their time's up. Everybody and everything is coming under this jurisdiction if it's under their supervision. And anybody who's under their supervision more than likely has license, birth certificate, social security, something or the other, and whatever else. Jackson becomes the sixth employee to resign or be fired after the U.S. Department of Justice last week issued a report that cleared Officer Darren Wilson of civil rights charges. Cleared him of civil rights charges. Right? Why would he be cleared of civil rights charges? Because civil rights have been unconstitutional since the 1800s. And these Negroes out here are marching up and down the place. They want to go on Selma Bridge and go march. Right? You know, they think that, you know, that's how they're going to get respected by the world. When the world knows that civil rights have been unconstitutional since the 1800s. And you're still marching for that in 2015? You probably deserve to get shot up or whatever of that. Because of your incompetence. Chinese have something, they sue. Plane get get blows up or whatever, people lose their family. They don't go march for nothing. They sue plane company. The only marching picketing people are our people. Always. Anytime anything happens, first thing, call. Al Sharpton, Jesse Jackson, you know what I mean? The whole crew, let's go march. First thing that they do. And all those individuals know about law and know about suing and all that. And they never take the position of, how about we go sue the police department for shooting your son? How about we go sue for whatever, anything, class action. How much people are marching? All right, everybody signed their name to this suit right here. We're about to go file this right now. We have 50,000 people out here marching. How about everybody sign their name to this lawsuit that we have right now that we're going to go sue? But well, they never do that. Because if they do that, then, you know, their handlers are going to put them in check. Just like they put, you know, Martin in check, shot him in the throat. You know, they put James Traffic in check. Tractor fell on him or whatever like that, you know. 
Well, uh, apparently, you know, he, he, he's had a farm for all these years, right? And he let a tractor fall on him or roll over on him. You know, that's like the guy who shot himself twice in the head, you know? <laughs> right? So, these people are covering up their little, their little stuff that they're doing. You know what I mean? Right? You know, they got, they got Messy Jesse out there. You know, first guy, when Martin Luther King, you know, assassinated or whatever, that's the first guy, you know, yeah. Camera's on me, you know, blood on his shirt or whatever like that, but they never talked to the guy who, you know, saw him over the body, you know, there's the blood in his hands, you know, and he's wiping the blood on his shirt or whatever like that. Everybody's rushing down to the hospital. And then that's the guy that gets to stay back to do an interview or whatever. How come him? Why, why that guy? All the people that were there or whatever on the, on the you know, the, the balcony, that's the only guy that stayed back? Nobody else didn't want to make, make a statement or nothing like that? That's the only guy? And then all these other people, you know, they disappear into, you know, whatever. And that's the man for the past 30 years or whatever, you know, he's parading around the place. And nobody never see that. Somebody's playing them. Right? And all these individuals know about law. Right? All these individuals know about you can't be a black person, you can't be Negroes, and there's no respect claiming to be something that you're not. Right? Um, so what 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 they want to do is criminalize, right? And anybody who removes themselves from criminality. They trump up stuff to criminalize them, right? So we wanted to talk about this one. This is um, March 12, 2015. You know, we have to um, give honors where honors are due. Um, a few weeks ago, a month or something ago, Q-tip uh, came out, told everybody that, you know, Little Wayne down with the Zulu Nation now. Well, he's not on the cash money crap anymore. He's on the Zulu Nation now. After, now, remember, this is... When he was down with the crap, you're not hearing nothing like this. Okay? Now that he's saying that he's not down with the crap anymore, right? Shooting at Little Wayne House. Apparent, an apparent hoax summoned a strong police response Wednesday to the home of rapper Little Wayne after an unknown caller, an unknown caller, reported a shooting. Caller claimed four people had been shot at the waterfront home on exclusive Miami Beach Island. Island. The responding officers, including heavily armed SWAT team, found no evidence of a shooting, no victims, no gunmen. Rodriguez also, know, also said the owner of the home, Bill Wayne, whose real name is Dwayne Michael Carter, was not there at the time. We can say for sure it was a hoax. Miami police spokesman Ernesto Rodriguez said it's not a laughing matter. Why is it not a laughing matter? Because Zulu Nation are more. You didn't know. You didn't know. Zulu Nation. Right? Are known as Hermetic Moors. Everybody knows, everybody knows, Africa Bambara, you don't know, you don't know, it's a shame, right? Everybody knows Africa Bambara Bay. A few little, a couple months ago, went to New York, City Council or whatever, got the hip hop commemoration award of whatever hip hop stuff. He's the one that they let talk. So a lot of people, hey, you know, you're not black people, you're more <coughs> whatever. Right? You don't want to pay attention to nothing. Well, Lil Wayne joined Zulu. What do you think he's joining Zulu? Just because it's a cool thing to do? You no, know, everybody's getting down with this information. Right? He didn't know, you know. 
African Bambara with the Grand Nature LBs, more science temples sat there in classes and stuff like that. Africa Bambada Bay goes to Harlem to go sit down with Morris Heritage and History School, Rosmaria Bay, and Anaida, and all those people to go learn about Morris Science. Africa Bambada Bay is a personal, uh, a personal master teacher of Sabir Bay. African Bambada Bay sat down personally in numerous classes with Taj Tariq Bay, who we know is, you know, with regard to more, he's up here. And hip hop guy is down with all these people. Down with them, like, down with them. But nobody's not, you know, not gonna put their nationality. They're gonna honor him, you know, play Planet Rock and, you know what I mean, whatever. But there's no way not to play the nationality. But they honor him though. You know I mean? Just like they say, you know, we honor Khalid Muhammad. You know, but nobody's not gonna talk about Khalid said that he's a more. You know? Oh yeah, we honor Dr. Malachi York, whatever, but nobody's not gonna talk about, you know, Dr. Malachi York L put out his own Circle Seven Quran for the Nuwapians to have the book of the Moors. some good news. March 13th to 15th, Metro News again, you know, free newspaper or whatever. You can just do your research on this one. Um, two Ferguson officers shot. Finally, somebody, you know, stood up or whatever for all this madness going on and did something. Finally, somebody did something. Mind you, you know, we don't know who it was. It could have been their own boy, shot their boy just to try to start a race war or whatever. Right? But the reality of the situation is if we're going to make claims about certain people are the enemy and all that stuff like that, you know, you know put on the enemy's phone, get off the enemy's Facebook or whatever like that. Stop buying the enemy sneakers and all that. You know, if, that, if that's their claim, that these certain people are the enemy, then stop supporting them. But you can't talk about, you know, certain people are the enemy, but then you're buying all their stuff. Obviously, they're not the enemy. They're clearly not the enemy. Right? Now, we want to... Um, Used today to put some some of the oral statements made by Noble Drew Ali on the record so that he can be taken more serious with regard to the things that he prophesied is gonna happen, the things that he prophesied was gonna happen that happened already. And so people could consider him way more than they consider him. And we, we always put it on the record, we are not some, you know, worshiping a dead man and all that stuff, that's why we bring him up and we want people to honor him because, you know, he walked on clouds, walked on water out there and all that stuff. It has nothing to do with that. This has to do with, he was a prophet. And a prophet foresees events and then lets the people know that, you know, this is what's gonna go down or whatever. And then the people are supposed to say, okay, well, let's see if this goes down. When it goes down, then you're supposed to jump on board because that proves that, you know, he is who he is, right? When um, we um, put on the record last, last Tuesday class a book called Muhammad, the First Sufi of Islam. You want to write that down and get that book so you can know that Muhammad wasn't Shiite or Sunni or any of the other 99 sects of you know, Islam. He was a Sufi, right? And um, Muhammad, the first Sufi of Islam. And all those people who claim Shiite, whatever like that, ISIS want to blow up pyramids and all that type of stuff, those guys killed Muhammad. No different than 
you know, Joshua. He had his little crew around him, disciples that he gave them the lessons or whatever, and they sold him <coughs> out. Same thing happened with Heru. Same thing happened with Quetzalcoatl. Same thing happened with, you know, the the the, 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 the female pope. Same thing happened with Noble Duali. That the own people around them assassinated them. Oh, it's um Muhammad, the first Sufi of Islam. That can do that too. Got his big board right here. And um, the author is <laughs> something Moon. I can't remember the name. Last name is Moon. Right? And to clarify, if he's a Sufi, Islam is I self lock and master for him. Islam isn't some religion, you know, in Salah and all that. Yeah. And if 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 um he was taken, the Prophet Muhammad, because we let, we're gonna say The Prophet Muhammad was taken, then all the other prophets that are in line with him, it would be the same story that they were taken. But all of them were assassinated by a religious idiot. So we're not going to take away from the fact that. Um, you know, it's like, it's like Noble Dwali made the statement that I can teach you better from the soul plane than on earth. So, I'm going to leave. Right? When, when we look at Noble Dwali from that perspective, you know, there's more that say that. You know, they didn't kill Noble Dwali. He wasn't assassinated because he said that he's going to go to the soul plane. To teach us. He chose to leave. Right? That was just a body that they did whatever to. Buried, killed, stabbed up, poisoned, whatever. Right? It's the same instant. I get where you're, where you're coming from. Right? But it doesn't mean that people didn't have ill intentions toward him. You know what I mean? And being that we, you know, weren't there, you know, Everything's up for everything's up for speculation. But you know, to, to stress the point that these people who, you know, got rid of this aspect of Islam, made this demonic, and then implemented the, the, the real demonic stuff and try to say that that's really what it is, we have to put them on a wall and bring attention. To the fact that people did have ill intentions against these people that we recognize as prophets. People wanted to harm them. People wanted to get these people off the planet because of the message that they brought to the common man who was just, you know, trying to herd his sheep or whatever like that, or, you know, live good lives, you know, I mean, be good, you know, good Muslims, right? So, we want to um, read some of these, and if if anything strikes a chord with anybody as to the manifestation of some of these things, you know, speak up on them so we can have um, you know some dialogue about it. Um, oral statement two thirty five, <coughs> brother J. Foster Bay of Temple 4 and Temple 25, said to the Holy Prophet, if your brother wants something, give it to him so that he won't sin. 
If your brother wants something, give it to him so that he won't sin. Right? So, the reason I'm reading this one is because there was a brother today, and I should have wrote his name down, but I didn't. Um, this brother was at work today. And, um, you know, just doing his work or whatever, outdoor work. And an old lady came up to him. Said, you know, can I borrow 50 cents? All right. Whatever. What do you need 50 cents for? Oh, I need to buy my medicine. You know, I don't want to buy my medicine. Right? Uh, I know that. So, huh? Yeah. So, he, he asked the lady, well, you know, how much, how much is the medicine or whatever? 90 bucks. Give out the 90 bucks down and gave it to her. Just because. Right? It might not have been a brother, but his elder wanted something. And he gave it to her so that she wouldn't sin. And then what, you know, I shared the post and I shared the post with the statement, better give it to her than give it to Umar Johnson, who wants to start some $5 million school, getting people to give up donations or whatever. And Creflo Dollar, who wants some $200 million plane for him, you know, touring the world or whatever like that. Tell the congregation give three hundred dollars. Two hundred thousand people give three hundred dollars so I can buy a plane. Better she get it than you guys give these Negroes your hard-earned fiat dollars. Better we do something to assist people out here who have nothing than people who have stuff keep giving them stuff when they have stuff already. Right, and 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 the rich only gets richer. Because poor people keep giving them their stuff. Instead of saying, hold on a second, I mean, why am I, I already got 800 pairs of Jordans right here. He's on the Forbes list right now already. And billionaire, billionaire club. You guys still going to give this guy? Yeah, or whatever. Right? And one of the wire situations that changes. Right? So that one there made me uh, bring that one up. Um, 2.33 the prophet said money does not make the man and clothes do not make the man it is character and free national standards that make the man which you know just so people are clear man in that sense also means women we're not just talking about male Money does not make the man. So all these people out here selling packages or whatever like that, birthright packages, selling paperwork, selling this, selling that, selling nationality cards, selling things to people, and then posing, you know, rappers, they got fiat now, they're gonna go file UCC, we don't got a check now, we're now we now we made it, whatever type of stuff. Don't even watch those people, pay any attention to them because <coughs> Money doesn't make them. Anybody boasting of some type of external whatever, they don't know what's going on. More than likely, that's false profit that you're selling. More than likely, that's a false profit. And it comes back to the same thing, like with um, um, you know, the poor people making the rich people rich, right? It's the ignorant people. Supporting the people who say that they have knowledge or whatever, when you know that these people don't have any nothing for you, you still gonna go watch their stuff. You still gonna press play on their on their whatever. Still gonna buy their DVDs and their books or whatever. These people should have books and stuff in boxes piled up for years because they have nothing for the people. They openly tell people that we're raping. Openly. Openly tell people that we're taking checks from the state in order to sell our people out. And they're not going with that. The people are going with the fact that, oh, he has, you know, wrote a book. I was going to go buy it or whatever like that. You know? Yeah, well, he's been saying black for the past 10 years. You still going to go buy a book from this individual? It's like we're, like we're saying, once again, with Umar Johnson. You know, you know, black psychologists of the whatever, and black this and black that. Well, yeah, you know, they're using Ritalin and whatever on the black boys and all this type of stuff. The real Ritalin 
is calling herself black. That's the real riddling. The real drug that's killing our community is us calling ourselves an adjective. When we know that we're a noun, us calling ourselves black people when, you know, like <laughs> Travis Blackman said, put your hand next to a tree, put your hand next to something black and see, you know, if it matches up. If it doesn't match up, then it's probably stupid. Because if you're black and you don't look like your hair, and you keep calling yourself that, if you're white and you don't look like paper, you keep addressing these individuals as that's what they are, obviously you're incompetent, and certain people who know better might choke you out on the street or whatever. Right? Just shoot you just because, you know, you're an You know, you shoot a chair, eh, no big deal. Shoot a bus, shoot a car, you know, no big deal. What got injured? Right? So the man, the, it's the character and free national standard that make an individual. Right? The Punjabis have a free national standard of turban. You don't see them without their turban. I don't care where they're going, church, synagogue, movies, wherever, they got their turban on. Court, they got their turban on. And nobody's not telling them, take off your turban. They want to be police, they get the badge and they put it on their turban. They're not take off their turban. Right? We look at, we look at, um, um, Hindustani. Every morning, they got their dot. It's a national standard. So why not get them to take their dot off? You need to take your dot off your forehead. You, know, you can't do that around here. They got their standard. Right? Everybody. Everybody who we would consider a national or somebody who has a nationality, they have some type of thing that they do that nobody's gonna argue with them about. Tell them that they can't do that. You shouldn't do that. But people who don't have any standards or whatever like that, they gotta be all the time, every day, all day. It was like um, when we were talking about, if you heard about the, the the old man from Hindustan that they tackled or whatever and ruptured his spine or whatever, now he's crippled. Right? He wasn't exercising free national standard because people thought he was a black guy. That's why they, he got tackled. If he had on his traditional or whatever like that, they would know for sure that that's not a black guy. He's not no threat to the community or whatever. Oh, he's the Hindu guy from those guys' house or whatever like that. Don't worry about him. Don't call the police or whatever. But because he was dressed normal, like a black guy, walking in a community that, you know, you know, you know how it goes when they see people who look like us in certain communities. They're going to call. Automatic. Especially out here. You look a certain way, they're going to call. Black guys walking around here. And then the guys are going to come. <laughs> Guns blazing. Just because it's a black guy. Right? So free national standards make the man. So more need to... Oh yeah, speaking about free national standards make the man. Anybody out there who wants to tell sisters that their free national standard isn't a fez and they can't wear fezes or whatever like that, run away from those people. Because we know Noble Juali told the Moors, sisters, wear your turbans as the color of the rainbow. Which which implies that, you know, sisters should wear turbans. Well, Noble Jawali wore a turban. He's not no sister. The boy's not pointing at him like, oh, no, nah, Noble Jawali's not supposed to be wearing turban because, you know, that's for sisters. But a sister put a fez on, 
Everybody, well, all these patriarchal moors now are mad. Sisters are wearing, wearing pheasants. Right? Trying to deny them their birthright. And they don't want to say that they're more. When you're denying mother her birthright of her own stuff. Right? So honors to all the sisters out there who wear their feathers. You know, but we don't play, you know, Morris Science Temple or Morris Divine and National Movement. It's patriarchy. It's a matriarchy. It wasn't on the 101 questionnaire. No withdrawal, he was holding a brother on this. Maybe, maybe this is patriarchy. Maybe. But the fact that he's holding a sister on this and humanity is written on her, we know that this is a matriarchy. Why? Because no withdrawal, he told the Moors, go back to the ancient. Four brothers and forefathers mindset, which is our societies are matriarchal, not patriarchal. And honor to all the mothers in the house who that are here. And to the mothers online. Anybody got any comments, questions, or anything? Um Oral Statement 2.30. The Moors once ruled the world. Now get ready to rule it again. But this time it's going to be done under love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. The Moors once ruled the world. But this time it's going to be done under love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. So he's making the statement to the Moors that we rule the world. This is for all those people who say that the Moors didn't have any rule in Kemet, and the Moors didn't have any rule in Africa, and the Moors didn't have any rule, whatever. The Moors ruled the world. But the Moors are ruling the world under some patriarchy. That's why. It's happening again that we're getting back to rule again because we made errors. We did things with our power that we shouldn't have done. And now we're paying for it by having to these foreigners out here in our own land abusing us. We want to acknowledge our status. That's who we are. Right? So as as Nobujuali stated that we will rule again, but it, the only way that we're going to rule again is if it's done under love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Because love, ain't nobody going to argue with that. Nobody has any issues with love. And anybody who has issues with love, obviously, you know, we don't need them around. Right? Truth. Same thing. Nobody has any issues with truth. There's no, there's no problem. Truth does not have beef with anybody. But even lies have to accept truth. Everybody wants peace. Peace is something that's universal. Ants want peace. Birds want peace. Birds don't want to be flying into skyscrapers all the time or whatever. Birds want to be out here eating hot dogs and the hamburger buns or whatever. Right? They're colonizing. They're doing things against them. That you have people posting stuff about monkeys having sex with chickens and stuff like that. That's real stuff going on. Because of all this madness. People getting away from the principles. Love, truth, peace, freedom. Everybody wants freedom. Every bird wants the cage open sometimes. Fly around the house or whatever. You got a bird open the cage. Let 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 nature be itself. Because everybody, every living thing 
wants freedom. A little bit of it. You know, you know, not to go crazy. Every little th living thing. And justice must be served against wrongdoing. And everybody wants that. And half of our issue is not accepting, you know, the, the responsibility based on the wrongs that we've done. The more did some wrongs to people. You know, check the records of the history of the more. It's not just, you know, good stuff. It's not just we, you know, civilized the European and we built all this stuff. We had libraries and, you know, we built bathhouses and all these things. There was some demonic stuff that Moors did too, that we have to accept that we did those things. Just to even up the scales. So, you know, you deal with all, all the good stuff that we did, you know, scales are like this. We have to accept the negative that comes with this as well. Have to accept it. You know, not to say, or oh, because we accept it, we're going to go do those things again, which is what the Europeans scared of, because the European already knows, you know, what went down when the Moors were in power. And they're not trying to have that go down again. And certain Europeans who recognize Moors that speak from the perspective of noble Juali are coming into this. They're not relinquishing their U.S. citizenship and going back to Europe or whatever. They're relinquishing their U.S. US citizenship and they're being members of the Moorish Science Temple. They're being members of the Moorish Divine National Movement because they know through the teachings of noble Juali that the only way that this thing is going to work the only way that there's going to be peace on earth is under the rule of the Moors, but it's going to be done under love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Which Nobujuali is the one, the only one that brought those five principles as one. Right? Love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. One of the one of the one of the most uh, one of the most cruel things that we did to humanity is going against nature, seeing nature as you know not the god, something to be tampered with, play with. Seeing nature as you know you need nature eye to eye because you know we're you know we we. We came from other places here. You know, Earth isn't our home. You know, we're celestial beings, manifested in a physical form. But we're, but we're celestial beings before we're human beings, right? So when when we look at um um the 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 making people slaves, taking individuals who are, you know, living beings like us, but because we have some superiority complex or whatever like that, we're going to take people and enslave them. Right? Our karma for that was us getting it. And we got it worse than we get it to them. Because, you know, it is karma and we're supposed to learn from it. You know, it's not, it's not in the European nature to hang people on a tree or whatever like that, you know, rape women in the barn and, and cut them open and kill their babies and stuff like that. That's not their nature. It's not their nature because they're a manifestation of our lower self. So if so if if they're a manifestation of our lower self, then us in our lower self is way more demonic than than anything a European would do. 
which is why you had the issue of um, the so-called war in heaven. And then the angels, you know, getting sent here, you know, because they went against God or whatever like that. You know, okay, well, the ones that are in flesh, <laughs> we're the fallen angels. We're not the ones that the higher beings. We're we're really the fallen angels. Why why are we fallen? So we can rise back up. But with the right vibration and frequency now. You know, and, and that's across the board with our people. You look at every every nation that is dark skinned people, they have some part of their history that they want to take over here, you know, let's put this high this back here. Because nobody finds out about that part of our history, then we can claim to be the, you know, whatever the best of the whatever built it, whatever like that. But the people who that dirt got there to, they, they already know us up. And majority of the time, if you do something evil to somebody, that individual wants to come back and get you back for that. They are, you know, eye for an eye and all that. Even though eye for an eye makes the whole world blind. But the reality is that all we have to do is take responsibility for these things that we do. Which would show that we're honorable. Which would give the individual who, you know, it's just like you do something bad to somebody and, you know, for years, you know, it's bothering you or whatever like that. And then, you know, you go apologize to them. Because, you know, you don't mess up or whatever. You know, and they don't, they're not looking at it like kill you anymore. Just because you took responsibility for what it is that you do. We have to take that. We just have to take responsibility. But we have to accept the things that we did wrong and then take responsibility for the fact that we did these things wrong and that, you know, people suffered for the wrongs that we did. You know? And not get mad at the repercussions. You know? so, and then now we're mad at the repercussions, so now we want to do something back to them again. Which is now putting us in, a, in another cycle of, you know, something's going to come back around, which is going to be worse. And being that we are, you know, um, the manifestation, you know, of the higher forces or whatever, you know, the come back around is going to be earthquakes, volcanoes, hurricanes, <coughs> which, which, you know, affects everybody. And again, we have this thing that, you know, um, we have this mentality like, you know, Europeans are cavemen, came out the cave, you know, grunting or whatever like that. They're scientists or whatever. They got weather machines right now, they could make rainfall. They got a weather machine that they could make today cloudy and then in a second, sun come up. They got GMO crop. They got people eating stuff. They think that's vegetable or whatever. That's not even a vegetable. That's literally something made in a lab. People are eating. Thinking that that's a real fruit or vegetable or meat or whatever. You know? So, as, 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 we, as we evolve into being higher thinking beings, out there changes as we evolve. So you know we're the foundation. We're 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 the adoption. You know, we're from the earth. So we are one with nature. We are part of nature. But if we disrespect it, you know, if we, if we really think that, you know, take this paper throw it on the ground or whatever, that's not coming back to you, you better know something's coming back to you. Really gonna just you know not you know make sure you don't step on ants or whatever. Out of out of out of mind, out of sight. Yeah, but you need to be mindful of stuff that <coughs> on on the, the small level. On the small level, be mindful of it. Just like we were talking about earlier, you know, people call children kids or whatever. Just you know, not you know, yeah, the kids are just playing. Let's go to the store in the kids section or whatever, and now everybody's mad 
when children act like animals. Well, you've been calling them animals for the past how much ever long. Were you mad? I'm right, mad. How about stop calling them animals? And they might stop acting like animals. But, you know, people want convenience. You can't say children, that word's too long. Just say kids. There were kids that were baby goats. Baby goats came out, somebody moved around here, walking and talking. No? Okay, so then why are you calling? You know what I mean? So if somebody were to ask me <clears throat> if I have kids, I'm to assume they mean children, because obviously I don't have any kids. Yeah. But, you know, if you don't qualify, what are you talking about? You mean baby goats? Then, you know, you can <coughs> also remember that, that kids doesn't just have a baby goat physical denotation. It also has a connotation attached to it because a goat is synonymous with the devil. So, you know, you say kids, yeah, all right, you're talking about children, but on a higher level, you know, you're really saying devil. So, so let, let's look at it from that perspective and it not being qualified. Yeah, kids. Yeah, the kids section, kids, okay, devil section. You know, go to all these stores, they got devil section. Right? Then everybody's taking their children to the devil section and then want to know how come there's a brawling McDonald's and this one girl's getting her ass kicked by all these, you know, kids. And then, you know, the Europeans are standing back and they're like, damn, that's savage or whatever. That's devilish. How could they do that to that girl and whatever like that? And when it, it was, it was that that was created by us, right? You know, incompetence is taught. You're not born incompetent. You ask a child, "Are you black?" They say, "No, I'm brown." Why are you not even black? By the time they get to eight, nine years old or whatever. They're willingly saying that they're black people. They're willingly saying, let's go to the kids section and I'll buy something. So, so, you know, certain things, certain things we can pass, but from a law perspective, if, you, if someone says, you know, you have kids and you agree with that, that means you acquiesce to children. To the term children and what that is. And if you default on children, then that means you're down with kids. So the devilish stuff is down with it, the <coughs> goat stuff is down with it, and now you can't even take care of your own household, you know what I mean? Calling CAS or whatever on your own children. Which is what's going on right now. They can't take care of their own children, send them to a counselor or somebody to go talk to when that's 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 your responsibility. You can send a counselor. You go talk to your, your child about something. And then, you know, then they go to counselor, and counselors are already, you know, they're, they're working for the state. They realize what's up. And they know that, well, you know what? The reason why he's acting out is really not because kids and books or whatever, but it's because he's an indigo child or whatever. He's coming up again. He's more advanced than anybody else. You need to suppress that ASAP. Give him riddle him, give him whatever like that. So he can just be in the class just. What's wrong? Nothing. Why well, do you look like that? Look like what? When they are literally zombified. So there's, there's super work that we have to do to correct this. But it really starts with self. When self is corrected, then society will be corrected automatically because because we 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 interacted with people as more and we see that it's they deal with you differently they don't deal with you like nigger if you know who you are it's not even a thought in their mind that you know you might be one of those you know that's gonna do something it's not 
they want to sit down, talk, have a chat, come on over, let's chill, whatever like that. It's not the same. Which is the point of why, you know, what Noble Drawley brought for us. It's not, a, a, you know, something out there, far-fetched idea, this guy came up with it and say that we're more, you know, we're not black people. You know, no, it's, it's, it's actually to, to get our frequency different. Because once our frequency is different, other people are going to pick that up. None. No problem. Twenty-four. The Holy Prophet said, one day, one day all the property is going back to the government. One day all the property is going back to the government. Right? There's two sides that we can look at this because just like we were saying, we have to qualify you know, what's the government. Property is going back to the government. What's the government? You talk about those people who we assume are the government? Or are you talking about all these people who are Negro, black, colored people, whatever else they call themselves, coming back into the constitutional form? All the people who are considered property, shadow property, are going to denounce that status and be actual governmental officials again. In their own government, not in, you know, organization, club, or whatever like that. They're going to actually start being the officials that they that they are. Speak about officials, right? Twenty-four. Twenty-four. Brother J. Blakely Bay said the Holy Prophet Noble Ali said that the Grand Sheikh of a temple should go to the temple, hang the charter on the wall, say the Moorish American prayer. When it is time for the meeting, not service, when it's time for the meeting to open, and if no one comes to the meeting after he sits and waits for one and a half hours, then take the charter down off the wall and go home. To make this statement would mean that upon his getting ready to leave, there was already issues with members not holding up their charge of being in the seat. But I mean, you know, they got reason not to be in the seat. Because half the people who were saying that they're grand chic or whatever were faking. They weren't really doing what's supposed to be done. That's, that's just like Islam to Brother Amin for making the trip all the way from North Carolina to be in his meeting. Because where he's at, ain't no temple out there. This is a hundred years that we've been in this. Hundred years Noble Jawali came or whatever like that. And who is it? Seth and Rabe came all the way from Philly. Make sure that if you came to Toronto, you gotta go check the temple. You can't come all the way to you don't come check the temple out here. If I say it not more or whatever. Right? Thirteen hours driving to make sure. Come to the temple. Travel. Thanks. Qualification. Right? That was the Amari one there. Yeah. I see you're sitting with Amari in the back, you know. Yeah. <laughs> right? 
So we so there's a certain obligation that we have to make sure that the people <coughs> see this for what it is. You know, we got two calls today from Moors in jurisdictions where there's no temples in. Yeah, we're just calling to see if we can, you know, we got part of your temple. There ain't no temple where we're at. And the other brother, yeah, I went to the temple and I was bored out of my mind. I just came back from there and I don't know what they're doing up in there, but it's not what you guys are doing. It's not what it is. Like, what they're doing and what y'all are doing is like, when they're, they're, the people are supposed to be running up in here. You're not supposed to be passing, like, uh, I don't know, you know, just like, just like sister, just pass them by, oh, doors open, let's check, see what's going on in here. Yeah, we got class, you know, for a you know, sat down, took some, like, some notes or whatever, go back about our business, just because, you know. I heard about the bars before, but, you know, why don't you stay, well, you know, I gotta leave, and, uh, you know, you know, Morris had to, you know, do, do some juju on her for her to stay. <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah, it wore off at the end. It wore off at the end there, you know. <laughs> um, two nineteen. Oh yeah, and um, just so more as know, this is um, oral statements and prophecies of Nobu Juali on the wall back there. Um. 219, the Holy Prophet Nobel said, Chicago is going to be your new Mecca. Chicago is going to be your new Mecca. Right? And remember, this is Prophet talking. Chicago is going to be our new Mecca. Which means that there, there was an acknowledgement that there was an old one. No, it's not dissing, but, you know, just like he said, this is a new era of time now. Oh, because uh, there was an old era of time, and out with the old, in with the new. No? He told him more that he's the, I'm the fifth and last prophet, and I am five times more powerful than I was before. The fifth and last one. So all you people think, you know, Jesus is coming back, Mom is coming back, or whatever like that. It ain't going on. The powers of all those prophets is in this one right now that we have. That said Chicago's new Mecca. So everybody who wants to, uh, you know, that's why, you know, um, that's why Chicago is the murder capital. But they're trying to get that power away from that area. That's why Nation of Islam's headquarters is there. Right? Because they know the power of that area. Right? Great Lakes <coughs> surrounding there. There's a frequency about Chicago. There's an energy about that area. Why it's going to be the new Mecca. So any more that, you know, are looking at this from a religious perspective, you know, Muslim, you know, to take the Hajj or whatever, there's your Mecca. You don't go on a plane or whatever, go all across the planet, spending all these thousands of fiat notes, making plane companies rich. Who drives to Mecca now? You know, and then if you check the records, Guarantee that one of the biggest Muslim populations is probably Chicago. Check. Yeah. <coughs> 2.16. Sister M. Peyton Bay said that the Holy Prophet said, I have fixed everything. I have stopped up every rat hole. <coughs> I have fixed everything. The main thing that had to get fixed was our mentality. 
That's the main thing that had to get fixed. How our perception of things came and told us that we're not Negro black colored. Rat hole stopped up. Nobody should be saying that they're Negro black colored anymore after 1930, 1929. But 2015, 100 years later, people still saying that they're black people. But the prophet told people, right? Like we were talking about, he met with Marcus Garvey. The reason why they took Marcus Garvey out of prison wasn't because of some letters that you and I members went to wrote to the president and you know, free him because he was the leader of the whatever. Because they know that if he, him and Noble Jawali put all their membership together, you know what the people that we got that saying that they're Moors all of a sudden in a snap like this? No, there wouldn't be a need for Nation of Islam and all that. If Garvey and them linked up, because you already know, you check the record, Elijah Muhammad's parents were part of the UNI. They were part of it. Before UNIA, before Nation of Islam, Elijah Muhammad's family was in the UNIA. So he would have been groomed about. Moorish, you know, even though he was anyway, it's because, you know, you can't really avoid the Moors, right? Everybody knows that, you know, um, carrying ourselves as free national is different. People look at you different. People look at you different than if you just have a dashiki on or whatever like that. You put a fez on and it's a whole different world out here. Totally different. Things aren't the same. Right? Imagine all those people that thought that they were Negroes in the Universal Negro Improvement Association saying that they're more. Recognizing that when Noble, when Marcus Garvey spoke about nationhood, that's what he was talking about. Right? Like you said, he was taught under Deuce Muhammad Ali. He wrote for Deuce Muhammad Ali's paper. Deuce Muhammad Ali was a Sudanese Moor, always had his fez on all the time. He didn't play with not wearing fez. Right? Brother J. Gil Bay of Temple Four and the colony in Prince George, Virginia. You know, this guy just who this person is now, right? Brother J. Gil Bay of Temple Four and the colony of Prince George, Virginia. said that the Holy Prophet said, I forgive you for everything that you did before I came. Now you are responsible for your deeds now. Right? Same thing Yahshua said, I died for your sins. You know, since I died for your sins, now, you know, do your thing. But you just know that, you know, coming to die for nothing no more, you're, it's on you now when stuff doesn't go out supposed to go. Took away all of the backlash that's going to come, and us being responsible for our deeds means that our deeds have to be right and exact when we execute them, because it's falling on us. It's not falling on a straw man fiction anymore. When you do something in your free national name that violates somebody's rights, that's coming back at, at the real living being, flesh being now. It's not coming back at a fiction. It's not coming back at a black guy. It's not coming back at a Negro or a color. It's coming back at a free national. Which means that, you know, you're you're about to reap something that you don't want to be reaping. Because it's, it's different to <coughs> do something to somebody, violate somebody as a Negro, and violate somebody as a Moor. 
there's, there's a spiritual connection now to your violation. It's not just you violated somebody and, you know, just put him in the cell or whatever like that. It's way more broad once you're a free national. That's why he told the more, be careful where you step. Because, you know, if you step wrong, you're stepping wrong as a more now. We have to make sure that we are stepping correctly. Because if we're not stepping right, we're going to have problems. Because there's a standard that's set for us. There's, there's a way that things are supposed to, there, there's a line that we're supposed to walk as more. And what was the thing? One one thing off the path? Right. One foot off the path and you're miles off. One foot. We have to make sure that when we step that we're stepping properly. Oh, this is for all the individuals out there <coughs> with regard to um, which temple is the best temple to go to and whatever like that, right? The Holy Prophet Jawali said, there is but one Allah, one prophet of the temple, and one more science temple of America. There's one. The only more science temple of America that there is, is his. Now, if Nobu left the scene, the principles that encompassed or made up his temple was supposed to carry on to all the other ones. But we already know because of the sellout, people took position of, you know, they're the new prophets, sitting the seat prophets back and all that to divert more of attention from the lesson that Nobu Dwali laid down. And because Moors got distracted by other Moors who thought that they, you know, could swindle the people or whatever, the time now is where all those so-called infiltrators or whoever like that, they're going 800 times harder than they ever did ever before because they're losing right now. They're losing fiat because they're losing membership. And they're losing membership because of active mores doing what those mores were supposed to be doing for 80 years, 90 years that they never did. So now those people look like, you know, you mean, you're, you mean this is about civics? You've been telling people religion for the past 100 years? And now people are realizing that this is really about civics? It's really about knowing the Constitution. Going law, having Black's Law Dictionaries and all that. It's not about just Holy Quran, of the more science temple, and one-on-one -on -one questionnaire, and then that's it. And you don't need nothing else because, you know, that's what Nobu Drawley brought for the more, and that's all. This is vast. Just like our history, this is vast. This is something that you can't, you know, like you said, you try to tear this up, it'll tear you up. More than didn't listen to that. So they're getting theirs right now. All those individuals that infiltrated and tried to pretend like this is some religious whatever, <laughs> you know what I mean? Change stuff in Nobu Dwali's thing, copyright this and that that Nobu Dwali brought, trying to make it seem like, you know, he was not doing the job properly, so they got to come and do the job properly because he didn't do it properly. All those people's time is up. But like we're saying, Every weekend, we got about 10 messages on this phone. Not from people out here. There might be one individual from out here. Everybody else is from outside of this jurisdiction. Wanting to know, what's the real perspective of this? Because I've been in the temple 10 years, and we've just been sitting there singing hymns or whatever. The Mobu Duali for 10 years. The six, like literally, singing hymns. Replace Jesus with Nobu Juali and sing the song. And then, you know, they got, they have issues outside of the temple that the temple is supposed to assist them in dealing with. And 
they can't get no assistance from the temple that they belong to. They're going to outside Mars to get assistance. The problems that they're having out there, that they're supposed to bring those things in here and have their representatives go deal with those problems for them. And that's, we, you know, we, we use it as, as um, a teaching tool for more. That we tell more, you know, go you know, handle it or whatever you want to handle it, right? right? But this is really supposed to be running on the perspective that you got a ticket out there, you bring it in here, and we deal with it. Because you're not in the jurisdiction. You have nothing to do with you. It has to do with some foreigner violating your right to travel. Got that one? All right. <laughs> right? Violating your right to exercise your right. And you as an individual shouldn't be dealing with those issues. The representatives, just, just like if, you know, you, you have a, they got um, snow removal and, you know, they keep missing your street. You know, you go to the representative. Tell the representative, yo, you know what, these guys come in here and they're shoveling or whatever, they're missing my stuff all the time. And then the representative will deal with it. You know? Right? Uh, prophecy that manifested already, that he talked about way back then. 2.11. Sister M. Washington L., chairman of Temple 43, said that the Holy Prophet said, one day there is going to be a holy war. There were no holy wars in 1930. to 1929. That's a theme of wars now. That's a theme. Holy wars. Go against Islam, go against Christianity, go against whatever. It's a theme right now. This is something that Nobu Ali said back then, before there was even holy war. That there be holy war. War is like a holy war. War is in heaven or whatever like that. Oh no. War is over religion. Whose religion is the best? Two ten, Sister A. Brown L. of Temple 4 and 25. And then also, too, just to let more know that, you know, back then there was no, we belong to one temple. Back then we belong to multiple temples. Because, you know, tomorrow we might have to move. And temples not coming with you. Any jurisdiction that you go in, you're supposed to find the nearest more Science Temple of America and be a member. Automatically. Because this is really where the, the safe haven is. Right? This is really where you're supposed to be protected. Sister Brown L. of Temple 4 and 25 said that the Holy Prophet said, some of you Moors are going to throw away your name just for a morsel of bread. Some of you Moors, some of you Moors are going to throw away your name just for a morsel of bread. Some of you Moors are going to be so detached from the Moorish movement that you're going to go back to calling yourself black people and Negroes and colors and Africans. After you were brought into the marvelous light, giving up all your vast estate and all that to go back to be neutral. It already went down. It already went down. So that's a that's a manifested prophecy. That's a prophecy that has manifested. We personally know of people who were in the temple that left. And went back to be a nigger. Literally. 
turn in the fez and all those type of stuff. Because, you know, they don't want anyone. Pujo said whatever to somebody. I'm going to leave this. No, no, don't blame me or whatever. You gave up your stuff because you don't want your stuff. And it's nothing personal. That's their birthright if they want to give it up. 208. The Holy Prophet Drew Ali said that the following things, said the following things at <coughs> the first convention in 1928. The garment that I have on represents power. And if you obey my voice, you will have power with me. I'm going to free you, though it's hard, because of your mixture, which brings about many different spirits. When you fail to hear my voice, you are lost. It is against the law to stand up in an audience intoxicated. The leader is not to stay out all night, giving earnings away to someone else. You who are heads of temples, it is easy for you to destroy the influence of the temple. Now lace up your shoes and get right. You stop figuring out how your way, figuring out your way, how your salvation shall come. Just follow me. You can say one thing, Mars. You have made a start for the kingdom. If you want success, you must follow the prophet. Husbands, take care of your wives and families. Wives, keep your home and children clean. I have done more than you think. I want you to help me by your good deeds of living at home and abroad. It is through your good, not with your lips, trying to be in the front seat of everything, always standing in my face. Moors, be careful of your steps. Leaders of temples must be careful how they walk. They must be an example. I am not asleep. It will take you most a long time to find out what I did today. When you all go home, don't start no stuff, for I will be right there listening to you. The Holy Prophet also said, this is no social organization. It is a divine and national movement. By you being born here doesn't make you a citizen. One must proclaim his nationality to be recognized as a citizen. Look what I have on. Now this was handed to me by the government. It represents the royal prince. The Holy Quran, the Holy Prophet wore a mantle of power. There is a chapter in the Holy Quran of Mecca titled, He is Mantle. Sister M. Whitehead L., Grand Governor of Illinois and who was the Holy Prophet's aunt, she, she, was the aunt of sis, she was the aunt of Sister Pearl Ali, said the Holy Prophet said in 1925, I have mended the broken wires and have connected them with the higher powers. So we just want to, you know we got some um, online questions, so we're just going to address a couple of those. See how much of those we can get to. Um, first question. Is the 14th Amendment applicable when filing a lawsuit against the employer because I worked under the straw man name. How would I use this when presenting suit in my free national name? I know this would be considered doing old business in my new appellation. However, my free national name is not on the record by autograph, is on the record by autograph via email sent to the employer. Please clarify. First, We'll go with Noble Juali saying that the 14th and 15th Amendment is not necessary for the redemption of the people. Right, so anything to do with the 14th Amendment is not somewhere that you want to go. The issue that majority of, of our people have with regard to um, underemployment and things like that is 
one the putting where you work on notice about your status correction or reserving your rights on those contracts that you make with a quote unquote employer so if now the individual is going to have to weigh their their odds because 99 percent of the time you put your free national name in the jurisdiction of uh, an employer they now have to pay the so-called taxes that they were going to hijack and get you to pay and they're not going to pay those they're not going to willingly pay taxes just because you know you want to be a free more what what moors have to do is start doing for self and taking your energy back from them if we want to be free we don't have to worry about getting suing them for anything or whatever like that just work for self this is why you know this is for the young and unborn this is for us to teach younger people to learn how to be self-sufficient so they can be the ones to work for self not necessarily for us to work for self because we already know that we're burdened with you know rent mortgages paying for whatever that we got to pay for in this um, colonial system that we're in so majority of us need some type of work but if we could teach the young people to be self-sufficient and teach them to work for self they'll be the ones you know teach them to get a trade teach them to learn how to work with their hands teach them to, to um, you know learn business so that they can do for self because the only way that we're really gonna gonna um, fix that issue is with them not working for it because you know every generation is gonna die out what's gonna what's the next generation gonna do are they gonna do the same thing like their parents did and go to school or whatever like that go to school for 20 years to come out and have to work at McDonald's still because you know can't get no work or are they gonna work for self and remember, these are all the things that Drew Ali put in place for us. Just like the sister was asking about the question, you know, what's some of the things that we did or whatever? We didn't follow the prophet. We're getting judgment for that right now, that we got to work for these colonists. Because we already had manufacturing companies. We already had businesses during Noble Drew Ali's time. Right? We weren't supposed to be in this position where we have nothing. Where you ask, where are the Morse? Where, what do the Moors do? And we, there's nothing that Moors could show other than some individual stuff that Moors just started yesterday because, you know, they want to do for self. They're, they're, they're supposed to be, you know, um, ample amounts of businesses that are 100 years old right now, just like their, their businesses that Europeans got that are 100 years old right now, that they've been around, that they've survived through depression and all that type of stuff. They're still around today right so you know because of of our colonized position and us having to work my perspective is when you go on these jobs or whatever like that reserve your rights and all that so that if it does come down to them doing you wrong or whatever like that now you go sue because you reserved your rights now you go do something about it because you protected yourself by reserving your rights when you contracted with these people, right? If you have to go back and do that, go back and do that. But if you're talking about this is your livelihood and you need this for your family or whatever like that, and you're just gonna go put down some papers and they're gonna be like, oh, you're a more, oh, we're stop taking checks out here right away or whatever, maybe 10 years ago. But now these people are clamping down on this idea of more working for them because they know that and you know 
We know Moors who took that position, put down nationality card, talk to human resources department, whoever like that. Ten years ago, fifteen years ago, yeah, they'll take your paperwork, file it in their stuff, change name on the checks and all that, and stop taking taxes. And Moors will be making more fiat than their supervisor and all that, just because of taxes only. And still have that job, be able to live, do whatever, you know what I mean? They're doing a free national name. But these colonists, they're, as we evolve, they're also evolving. And their evolution is for survival. Because if, again, if, if, if we're not paying their tax, then they got to pay it. And they'll fire you and get some Negro who's willing to pay the tax or whatever before they take yours off and just keep you there. Right, right. Right, right. Because you have no obligation to it. Because remember that if you have, if, if, if you say that you have your own business, right the only reason that they're gonna want some tax or whatever like that is if you register but if you have your own government that you register in then you don't need to register it with them which is which is what this this was created for so that you have somewhere else to make your registry this was created so that you don't have to go to the colonizer you can actually go to the to the real landlords of the Americas and let them be the ones that verify, oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, he's a member of, you know, whatever like that. He's not obligated to pay no taxes to these people. You know what I mean? And move forward that way. But it comes with it comes with a recognition of who, you know, when we say government, we say taxes, you know, what what are we referring to? Who are we referring to? You know, if we're talking about some foreigner, that's not taxes. You know, that's really um, extortion. You know, that's not a legitimate government that we're dealing with. Those, that, those are private corporations that are taking the seat of government, pretending that they're the government, and people are going with the fact that, oh yeah, that's, they're the government. All around the board. You know what? Right. So you know it's like it's like um so if you're if you have so you start your your business and your business is prosperous but you're not paying taxes to those foreigners right you should be putting whatever those things were that they were gonna get there should be somewhere that you're putting it right and 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 it's it's with hopes that you put it with who put you on you know what I mean you're not just gonna oh yeah I got fifty thousand extra dollars because I don't pay taxes so. You know, go put down on a Ferrari. No, you know what I mean? Or whatever. Maybe you know? some of that money we can go putting in for a school. For a school or something or, like that, uh, right? Or you know, something, maybe the council, and then whatever we need to then go on your behalf. You know, that's going to be out. Right. Um, next question was, um, when is top right corner necessary to affix postage with the autograph is it necessary for a proclamation um the the concept of of using a postage stamp on your documents and signing through a postage stamp on documents is really um for monetizing bills of exchange so the, the, the concept is that that 
Okay, the Friedman concept is that you, you put a postage stamp on a document. Let's say you have court to go to, right? Um, type up your writ or whatever, and then on the back of your writ, bottom corner, you're going to put a stamp right there, and then you're going to sign through the stamp. Because what happens is that when you have a situation in court, they're going to take the papers and they're going to put the papers, the judge is going to take the papers and put them down face down on his desk. So he doesn't have to read them. But if you have the stamp there, now it shows that, you know, what side is he going to deal with? Are you going to deal with the monetized side or are you going to deal with the side with the word? Which is going to make you, you know, make him flip the paper over and now he has to deal with the fact that there's a claim of this European saying they're a son of God, whatever like that. And that's how those guys get their stuff thrown out of court, right? From, with, with, um, with Moore's affixing the, the postage stamp on a document, that makes you be the postmaster general because the real jurisdiction of, of paper going from different places is based on the postmaster. The only person who could send papers anywhere is the postmaster. The, 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 like, like Grand Chief Nature was talking about um, in, in the, the Great Seal class, that the post office is a fraudulent jurisdiction because there's not supposed to be go to the post office to pick up mail or you know somebody walk in there and put something in the mailbox, right? You're, su you're supposed to actually be the individual that goes and gets it. Nobody's not bringing stuff to you to put in your mailbox. You go to the post office to go pick up what, because the post office is supposed to be the jurisdiction that holds the mail. Just like the bank is the jurisdiction that holds the finance, you're just using them to store your stuff because you don't want to walk around with gold and silver in your pockets or whatever. Right? Now, there's a book out there online that you can get called um, Modern Money Mechanics. It's a PDF online, and it was put up by the Federal Reserve. And the, the Modern Money Mechanics book's purpose is to show how they monetize, how they create all this money that they say that they have out of nothing. It's, it's through them monetizing. So. Um, for example, what they talk about it, which, you know, we're, we're working on the process, is the whole, the concept of discharging the debts, right? The, the, by putting a stamp on, okay, so, whoever, um, mail, where mail gets come to your house, it's a, it's a statement of account that people think is a bill, right? Now, when you look at the, the numbers, Somebody says, if somebody sends you a bill, right, and it says 600, right, no, and then they say, no, buy whatever, allocate, whatever like that, right? People are going to look at this statement of account, of account, which is not a bill. Right? Statement of account is not a bill. So they're going to look at this statement of account, see that this thing says 600, and then they're going to go pay this. Right? Now, the statement of account itself, the statement of account itself, this is what the whole thing about when you hear Robert Bernard and these people talk about 96 and the fix and whatever like that. And then, you know, the thing that they send you is really the money and all that. They're going to take the statement of account and use the statement of account to pay the bill, right? That's why they give you the, the little thing, right? And then when you go to the bank, they cut that part off or whatever, then they flip it back and then they stamp it. That's the payment. The 600 bucks goes in their pocket. That's, what, that's what's been going on, right? So what the, what the stamp does now is that you put the stamp on the document, you know, two cent stamp, 
two cent stamp. All right, this is in the money mechanics stuff. All right, you put the stamp on it, and then you sign through the stamp. That's supposed to monetize this people piece of paper, so that now now you can use this like how the bank can use it, and then. You send this to the people who say that you will, and then they're supposed to take this with the monetized thing on there, which that also shows that you're the postmaster, because you send it in the mail. So now you they'll take this thing that says you owe 600, right? It's now monetized because of the two cents that they take it, and then they discharge that. And then it's supposed to be even. And then every month that you get that, that's how you do the pay. Instead of going in your pocket and giving 600. <clears throat> right, but that that process has not been done for so long that you know it's not like they're just game to do that just because you know it's supposed to work like that you know, because they're you know colonists, inquisitionists, or whatever like that, and they're not gonna let stuff just fly that easy. Plus, then they gotta go get jobs or whatever instead of we us paying for all their stuff. And doesn't matter. Huh? Yeah, it do, doesn't matter. The ninety-six thing is is that's overrated, but that's what those guys use in order to get people to think that oh they figure out a way to do something or whatever like that. Then they tell you know three hundred and we can show you how to do this process. When when now they got now they're getting you for three hundred. The other guys getting you for six. You know what I mean? When it ain't that serious. Modern money mechanics already break down everything. It was probably what they used to even do the 96 is the fixed thing. You know what I mean? And not tell people about the free PDF online called money, Modern Money Mechanics that breaks all this stuff down. All right? So, the, um, you know, so it's something that, that you know, we, and also, too, you're not, sending that back to who sent you the bill. Remember that we always deal with echelon people. We're not dealing with the low level minions who don't know what this is about. So for example, first time I did this, they sent me back a letter that said, you forgot to put the money order in. <laughs> right? Because I was dealing with the dummy who doesn't know what, what this is, right? They just looked at it like, oh, this guy is trying to put a cop in, whatever. But, you know, the law department or the, the CEO or whoever, somebody has to know what this is about. We're just finding out who that guy is, and we find who that guy is, then that's the guy who gets all your all your stuff. And because he knows how to deal with it. And it's not some illegal thing. It's not some, it's actually really paying off the, the bill in a in the correct way because we're in bankruptcy you know and also to go check canada's um canada's um credit rating <laughs> so you can see that their triple a credit rating is stable well you have triple a credit rating but it's stable like it's you know if you have triple a credit rating that means your credit rating is like you got exemplary credit it shouldn't be listed as stable if it's triple A. Somebody's balancing something. You know, how are they balancing? Because remember, they're in debt, 50 trillion or whatever like that. So obviously your stuff's not stable. Right? Contradiction. You know, but again, you know, we don't, we're not looking, that's not our research. You know, we don't look at those stuff. So we don't know that, you know, that there, there's, you know, they got a big list, all the countries in the world, what their credit rating is. Stable, unstable, you know, you know big whatever, do not <laughs> give these guys credit or whatever. You know what I mean? You know, you got to... So it's not a couple of companies that they all have their Yeah, like whoever, whoever sends you, like, okay, for example, with, um, <coughs> with collection stuff, somebody sends something from... from collection agency right my my response to them is you didn't send me a bill because bill of exchange act says you know blah blah it has to be signed by blue ink or whatever like that you sent me some paper 
you know, when you send me the bill, I'll pay you. And then they never send nothing, so I guess I have to pay you. And I'll hear from them after that. <laughs> right? Because, you know, if, I'm, if you're telling me pay you, then I should be getting a bill. Yeah, and a bill should be signed in blue ink. You know what I mean? Yeah, right? Right? The paper says, yeah. <laughs> paper says. The bill should say. So when you send the bill, no problem, I'll pay. And then they never send a bill, they just send it to the next agency or whatever, then they try their strong arm extortion, whatever, try to get you to whatever red letters, and then do the same thing with them. If they, if they send the bill, it would, well, the one thing that, 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 the one thing that it should have on it, if it's a bill, is somebody's blue ink signature. Like, that's the main thing you want to see. Like, no robo stamp or whatever like that. Signature blue ink. If, it, if they say it's a bill, but it doesn't have blue ink, whatever, then that's not a bill. That's just another paper that they're sent. Right? Invoice. Right? And then again, too, with this thing, it's, it's, it's not, it's, it's the way to do it, but just like everything else, we've been in the dark, and, you know, we're coming into the light, and us coming into the light is a threat to everybody because, you know, we're, we're, the, we're the heirs to the estate. You know what I mean? Right? Um, I have a question about sending a writ of discovery to a doctor if you believe they won't give you your whole patient file. Also, how do you write such a document. Um, every every um, challenge to their claim is done by a writ of discovery. And a writ of discovery is affidavit of fact where you're stating your position and you're questioning them on their so-called authority that they claim to have. And that you're demanding answers from them in a certain particular time frame so that, you know, you can get what it is that you're requesting from them through the writ of discovery. And then if they don't send that, then, then you default them with a default judgment affidavit of fact, which now becomes a paper trail that you can use to sue them later for whatever it is that you say that, you know, they owe you. Um, now, with regard to doctor files or whatever, or patient files, um, remember that they, they are dealing with corporate entities. So the fact that they're dealing with a corporate entity, just like car ownership, whatever else, we think that because we have the whatever, it's ours, when they, they ain't yours, it's their stuff. Especially if the name that we're claiming is us, in their system is written in all capital letters. Then it's really their patient files, and you know you can make a claim for it, but you know it's up and down whether they give it to you or not. Situations like that, it's better to go to um, if you're not in 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 you know free national um, status, it's probably better to go to um, justice of the peace or something. To get an affidavit and get them to notarize it. If if they if they well, it depends on. Again, it depends on the individuals that you're dealing with. Are they willing to acknowledge that they've been criminals? by putting your stuff in all capital letters, you know what I mean, not qualifying that that's what they're doing, you know what I mean? Um, not telling you that, you know, when you if you give blood, this is not our blood, we make a clone of you or whatever, like, you don't really have no claim. Because, you know, it's, it's our blood. <laughs> it's not yours. Even though we took it out of your arm. But, you know, your arm is our arm because <laughs> your files is all capital letters. You know what I mean? 
So, um, but mo most places, you know, as far as doctor's offices or whatever like that, you know, they they care about their credibility. So if you just talk about, you just talk to them about putting them on blast for something, they'll give you your stuff because they're about credibility. They're about reputation. Certain certain um, um, you know, occupations or whatever, they 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 want to make sure that they have you know A1 rating. They don't want to have any hits against them that, you know, they did criminal activity or whatever like that because that's, that's bad for their business. Um, oh, and um, somebody said in the chat also that um, when you're dealing with um, doctors, offices, um, um, corporations or whatever like that, and, and it has to do with, with any type of finance, you want to hit up the CFO, the Chief Financial Officer. That's who you would want to direct your financial whatever is to the CFO. Don't deal with the CEO, don't deal with the whatever, deal with the guy who deals with the finance. And that might that might get get you know some that might get some remedy. And again, remember that you know we're dealing with imposition operation, we're dealing with colonialism. So you know um, we have to to recognize we have to recognize that you know that we are dealing with people who have been occupying for. 200 years, you know what I mean, and if, if somebody was living here in your house for a few hundred years and you just come talk about put the key in the door, you know, kick those guys out, they're not leaving just because, you know, you came back home, you know, they're going to put up a fight, you know? and, and our thing is to make sure that our fight is, um, um, our fight is legitimate, but, but, um, um, class action. Our fight is in numbers. Our fight is, if that guy has a situation, then we all have a situation. You know, that individual is not just dealing with their situation on their own because they're dealing with it. You know, we're all dealing with the situation. You know, which is why, you know, again, comes back to, you know, years ago, Taj would always make a statement of, you know, class action suits if you get tickets. Because if they, violate one more right, they violate all everybody's rights are getting violated. If they violate one. So we are you know you know we make statements like um if if a more has a situation and he's gonna sue so his wife could sue because you know on the day that he got kidnapped she was supposed to get her foot rub or whatever like that didn't get it, you know, because he was locked up sue for that. You know, you know, a child wasn't supposed to get whatever because, you know, dad got whatever, then the child has a lawsuit. And then, you know, cousin has a lawsuit because the child was supposed to go play with the cousin. He couldn't go play because he was sad because his dad was whatever. And then instead, we have the suit. You know what I mean? So we all look at this from a class action perspective. Um, I think that's about what all we got today. Any questions, comments? Or emotional outbursts. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you, yeah. You could, yeah. You could put your, you know, what name you got now. You know what I mean? Um, and as, you know, as you evolve, then you would do whatever. But right, right. So yeah, yeah. Well, whatever, whatever spirit tells you to put for attendance. To show that, to show that you, that a body was here, right? Um, and also too for um, for the Moors that are um, online, we are going to. It's supposed to be up on RV Bay soon, but we are going to be opening um, the doors for um, online honorary membership for Canaan Land Temple because. There's so much corruption out there, you know what I mean, like real life corruption, that there's some people who, you know, 
they can't even find a temple to go to, but they've been on Canaan land more for two years, three years, or whatever like that. So, you know, um, we got to acknowledge that, you know, people need a home, and if this is it, then whatever, this is what it is. And we try to connect them with as much or as many conscious, active moors that are in the jurisdictions where they're at if there's no temples there. So just look out for on the Canaan land page. I don't even know if it's up there. It could be up there already. Um, on the Canaan land moors page on rvbaypublications.com, look out for the honorary membership forms. And um, you just fill those out, send it to the temple, and then we'll send you back, or the secretary would send you back a, um, you know, thank you for being a member thing. Um, and remember, it's similar to um, people who get honorary doctorate from, you know, whatever. You know, you see an actor get some honorary diploma or whatever like that. Doesn't mean that you went to the school and that, you know, you did your four years or whatever. It just means that we acknowledge that you're a Moorish American. You don't have somewhere to call a temple. So we'll be that place that you call temple. We're not going to be sealing nothing and anything like that. We're just going to give people membership so that they have somewhere to call uh, Moorish Science Temple. Because, you know, that's that's a dirty Moor thing when, you know, what temple you belong to. And then, you know, half the Moors who don't have a temple where they're at, well, well I don't belong. And now they got attacked because, you know, Moors are trying to convince them that you, know, you have to be in a temple to be Moor. Oh, okay, well, we'll accommodate that for some people. So now you can tell them that you're part of them. Right? Islam to that. So Islam to all the Moors online. See y'all on... Um... Oh, yeah, sure, more. Just like what you're speaking on right now. Um, two things. First, for the new Moors coming to the States, we do have packages. They're free. So don't worry about it. More or less, in the in the packages that we have, right, is is a process for you to start studying. Um, within it, as Pujo has mentioned already, I, well, in terms of what we got, is in regards to correcting or changing your name. That goes to you. Um, there's some information here on, on that. They'll go over different articles from Supreme Court cases, giving you the, the I'll say, de jure, not de facto, that if you want to change your name, you can go ahead. And the, you, the, the, is it, which one is it, the United Declaration of um, Human Rights? Human Rights uh, yeah. art, article 6, it states, yeah. and 6, okay, yeah, it states that you could change your name, any Aboriginal could change your name without going to the court. But you don't have to go to course to do that. So, has some information on that. Also, have some information on what to study and how to study, and books that you could go and get to study. Um, books that we use is um, the Black's Law Dictionary. Um, we use any old dictionary, as old as possible. Uh, get old maps, old almanacs to study, because everything that you've been told, I'm sure it's wrong. When you go back into the older books and older, older maps, it's going to show you exactly where you are and exactly where you live. Next is the application form, or I'll say member, membership form, right? This basically, it gives you verification that you've handed it into the temple. And then what I'm going to do next, uh, I want to you after, okay? This is a... Uh, I just want to this okay. Basically, what this does is verifying that you have handed in your information to them. And it says, uh, Morris Divine National Movement of North America, Morris Science Temple of America, Morris Consulate, uh, 25338 Edmonton Avenue West, uh, Toronto, Ontario, M6M1T2. Uh, uh, Canada, Canada, Northwest of Mexico, and in the body it states, I, Amari Sizwio Bay, acting in my official capacity as Secretary of the Morse Science Temple of America, Morse American Consulate in Canaan Land, do, here, do hereby witness that um, appellation and title is one of our Morse American nationals. 
According to our laws and customs, we are to do all business using our free titles El or Bay, as these are in accordance, sorry, in honor to our ancient foremothers and forefathers, the ancient ones, mound builders. We are the Moorish Americans, indigenous and Aboriginal peoples to this land, including the area where Toronto now lies. We are the descendants of the ancient mound builders whose wondrous structures can be observed from Central America going north, mostly along the Mississippi, onto the Toronto area where over 50 mounds alone can be found. And with love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice, and it's autographed by myself and by the Grand Sheep. So once we get a, a membership form, you will get one of these. As a, this is just for verification, so if you want to go out there and do business outside of the temple, you could use one of these. Okay? Um, also, also, we have nationality cards. Now, this is just a, it's just a cardboard, but we have to understand the concept of a nationality card and the concept of nationality. You're born with it. Just the card, just a piece of paper. I don't care how much you pay for it, you can pay $20,000 for it. It's just the card. And we've had experiences, Omar, myself, that they've asked us, what is that? How is it? It's just the card. Because remember, nationality is you. It's just the card. It's you. What's on it? Well, you got to be able to explain it coming out of your mouth. They're so just going to look at it. You don't want to know that you know what you're talking about. And that um, also to the brother that I'm speaking to you because I know your your brother in here. Um, you had asked in regards to businesses, right? We do have some businesses, um, some some more who do business. For instance, we have uh, t-shirts in here. Um, you can purchase them for fundraising for like twenty dollars or whatever you could get. We also have some products over here. Um, uh, we have some uh, some glasses. At the end, you could ask me for a question, I can explain them or whatnot. We have creams, we have teas, um, we also have uh, books on the wall. Whatever it's marked in terms of fundraising prices, it's marked on the books. If it's not marked, ask me, I'll give you the, the amount. DVDs as well, it's also marked. Actually, if it's not marked, ask us and we'll give you the price on it. Um, I sent out an email this week, right? in regards to the information and the booklets and stuff we have in here. Um, it's in regards to if you can't afford it in terms of giving what you can, just give what you can. Don't just take it. Um, that's kind of an issue that we are having, that more than just coming and taking some products and just leaving it with it. It's happened twice already. In, a, in the past month, right? I'm not going to call any names, whatever. It's just, it's happened. And, I, you know, it's, I mean, as I said, if you can, if you don't have enough for fundraising or whatever, just speak to myself, speak to Pujo, speak to whoever the other heads in here, and we can accommodate. You know, it's, it's, it's a give and take. It's a give and take. So just wanted to put that on the record. Um, and uh, that's it. All right. All right. Well, um, so, so that's that. Next um next session is gonna be um Tuesday Tuesday night seven p.m. on Ustream um and Blog Talk Radio slash MHHS Eyes Wide Open Tuesday night at nine thirty. Blog Talk Radio Wednesday night same channel at 7.30, and the third Thursday of every month, Sons of Allah, with uh, myself and Brother Mizraim on MHHS Eyes Wide Open on Blog Talk again. So, we're going to keep it moving, we're going to keep getting this information out to the people. Honors to all the active Moors, honors to all the international Moors, and if you're temple Moors or if you're passive, get active ASAP. And if you're dirty, Josh Shimatar is ready. So, do your thing. Do your thing. So, we'll just close out with the prayer. 
We paste the east. Five on the left, two on the right. Allah, the Father of the Universe. Allah, the Father, Father of the Universe. Universe. Father of Love. Father of Love. Truth. Truth. Peace. Peace. Freedom. Freedom. Peace. And justice. And justice. Allah is my protector. Allah is my protector. My guide. My guide. And, and my salvation. And my salvation. And by night. By night. And by day. And by day. His holy prophet. His holy prophet. Noble Juali. Noble Juali. Rome must fall. Oh, and um, also too um, we have um. We just got a new release, a new book release. Uh, myself and um, brother Rami Salam L just finished a book called um, 77 Facts About the Moors with Full Proof. So that's going to be coming out. Um, that's going to be on the, at the temple in a couple weeks. Um, it's online at Khalifa, KhalifaMedia.com. Peace and love. Love.